Thank you. Okay. Yes. And this is the work done in my research group together with uh, Tarke Salmela and Ashley Collin. So what this talk is about. So basically the topic addressed here is to do with the mobile technology and the couples and bit. And this is like in the cross section of that. So basically this is how the bedroom at night should look like, more or less. Yeah. And this is then how it might look like. Yeah. And not only that, but actually this. Yeah. And this is the this is basically the topic what we are exploring. So um, what kind of practices do couples have for individual and shared technology use in bed? So mobile technology, so basically phones, phones or tablets. And what are the perceived effects of the mobile technology use in bed? So related work. A few words about that. So there's like an excessive amount of research in the smartphone usage. So I think everybody in this room like published at least one smartphone's paper, right? Yeah. So there's a lot of that about like social interaction and use of apps and so on and so on. But then um, during recent years, there has been like uh, more and more about this attention in media, especially about the negative effects of the technology. And also not just in the media, but also like uh, research has addressed this. So what are the consequences of having mobile technology as a constant company? For instance, like the problematic usage of the, like addiction with the phones, then um, this fear of missing out, like you have to check the Facebook so that you don't miss something like what's happening in your social circles. Um, also this like that, um, there's a feeling of uh, that technology replaces to situate it the face-to-face -face communication, for instance. And uh, also this discussion that uh, the use of smartphones is perceived inappropriate in certain contexts, for instance, in the dinner table and so on. And related to that, for instance, like how, what are the family rules or practices on the phone usage? Like um, how do you want, what do you want to teach to your children? Like don't take your phone on the table and so on. So there's lots of research on, on these concerns related to technology use. But there's not so much research around these um, co-located couples and um, mobile technology use in bed. And this is what we are looking in our paper. Um, bed as a context of technology use has mostly been looked at from the viewpoint of sleep, like um, um, sleep quality. So um, things like social media use or mobile phone use in bed have a negative effect on the sleep, sleep quality. And then um, as a consequence, there's, there can be something like uh, depression or anxiety and so on. But what we are interested in is more this um, social cultural aspects. Of, the, of using the technology. Not, so we are not focusing on the sleep quality in our paper. Okay. And basically what we um, have conducted is a user study, actually two user studies, where um, the first one was um, interviews of couples, so altogether six couples, 12 people, um, and the interviews were conducted at home, and including the bedroom. Yeah, at data. Yeah. And... Um, then we had, an, uh, in order to get a little bit wider set of data, we conducted also an online survey uh, with uh, Mechanical Turk with uh, 117 participants um, who, were, who were, were living in a, in a relationship, in an established relationship, and basically did the qualitative analysis on that. And what we have questions on basically was the, uh, about the sleeping arrangements and the sleep-wake rhythm people had. Uh, mobile technology use at home in general, and especially to then like, compare that in the context of the um, mobile technology use in bed, including uh, the visual and auditory environment, the motivations, the bodily positions, and the effects on intimacy and verbal communication. And this is like a, a typical... Um, picture like how the, how the phones end up, or what's the location of the phones in the bedroom. So often a lot of people seem to like charge their phones in the bedroom and then use it as an alarm clock, for instance. Yep. So findings. So, um, so as a, like a basic phenomena here is that um, using a smartphone or using phones or tablets in, in bed it's, um, it's very common. 
So we can think that like a, it seems that the roughly two to, um, three quarters of people use the uh, phone in a shared bed, either um, simultaneously or like uh, separately. But then this uh, using a shared device is much less common. So basically this, um, here it's about like a 20% in our sample used a shared device at least once a week. And then what do people use the phone for? Is mostly for relaxation. So this was like the, the most um, topic that, or um, area that came up the most. So relaxation, entertainment, some like um, news reading, uh, planning the future activities or next day, then friends, communicating with friends, and then also like um, uh, some which like specifically say that they do not use phones or technology in bed. And then as a um, positive effect on, on taking the technology in bed is um, that there seems to be this um, quite common practice of having a sharing, shared cozy time. Like people have this like coming to the bed and then using phones or tablets like a, um, as a routine for getting, getting to sleep or before getting to sleep. And also it's kind of like a, uh, it's perceived that, that it's a, like a peaceful moment together, even if the, um, the device use is like done alone or, or, uh, or shortly. And this use of technology it supports discussions, like um, commenting on social circles, okay, like what somebody has done somewhere, or um, planning the activities for the next day, or like um, what should we do, this or that, or what, what are we going to do on a holiday, and so on. And also comments on the entertainment, for instance, like one couple was commenting on that, like, they play some game and then they <laughs> keep swearing together, like how badly they do in some field, and so on. So this is like a, the positive, positive effect on technology usage. Um, and out of, the, out of our material, what we got is this, like, a, there's like multiple, multiple meanings of the bedroom. So bedroom as a site for entertainment with the technology. But then, on the other hand, there also um, came up this, um, this phenomenon that bedroom, bedroom is, um, some people keep bedroom as a sanctuary, like where they uh, especially don't want to have technology in. And like this comment, we don't allow them, like mobile phones or tablets, in the bedroom at all. And this also relates to the idea of having a bedroom as a sanctuary with some other practices, like for instance, like uh, you want to keep the bedroom, bedroom clean or you want to keep the outside world out of the bedroom, like, uh, like this comment, like when starting vacuuming, the bedroom is vacuumed first, like because it's like uh, the most important. So, uh, so there's this kind of practice in, in some families or with some couples. Uh, but there's also, we found evidence on this, like um, bedroom as a site for excessive technology use and where, where it can create um, some conflicts, for instance. Like you can't get to sleep in peace because there's something beeping all the time. There comes a Facebook message, then another, and so on and so on. And um, so there was um, also these negative effects. And then talking about the bedroom, then this the intimacy and sexual intimacy also um, comes in the picture. So mostly people didn't uh, see that mobile technology has effect on their sex lives, but um, there were some like occasional comments, either pros, pro, uh, for or, or against, like uh, supporting or, or not supporting. Like, uh, well, a couple of times it has ruined the mood, or then on the other hand, like um, using like um, sexually related material before sex. Now, a few of those comments came up. Um, but this disturbed sleep um, because of the phone or tablet usage. So um, that was uh, relatively common or surprisingly common. We were surprised about this. So basically, um, either the noise of the partners or your own phone wakes you up or the light wakes you up. And also this, um, that when, when you wake up at night, and you look at the time from your phone, and then you start doing something else that it carries away to, to check your uh, social media or something like that. And this that, um, so um, kind of like a, more or less based on our sample, like maybe 10% or so people wake up on the phone on daily basis, uh, on weekly basis. So it really is a, actually a big effect if you think of the society. And 
then like there's these uh, different strategies to avoid disturbing the partner. So basically, the most common were like uh, setting the phones in the low volume or silent, uh, dimming the screen light, and this like uh, uh, making clear that you don't use the technology in bed. So leaving the te technology behind, like in the kitchen to charge or so, or uh, stepping out of the room if you wanted to use the phone. So that took place. Um, then also this um, use of other, other gadgets in order to not to disturb the other. So um, use of headphones or using um, blindfolds like a mask to, to cover your eyes if you want to sleep and the other one is using the phone. And then funnily, it's uh, surprisingly common. I would say that people use it like uh, under the blanket, the phone under the blanket. Like, uh, so really like covering, covering yourself up in order not to disturb the other. And there's also like, a, um, we found quite a lot of, or um, well, there was quite a lot of responses on this, like uh, what kind of, uh, that there's negotiation tolerance practices that take place. So um, people were, people wanted to take care that they don't disturb their partner when they, uh, for the sleep. Like uh, either creating common rules or using negotiation either like verbally or bodily, like coming closer together or getting apart and so on and using that as a, as a negotiation practice. And also this, like, you just tolerate, like, okay, my partner just is like that, and I can't help it, and yeah, it's not the problem we have agreed about it. Yeah, that kind of things. So, um, wrapping up. Um, so, the takeaways, takeaway messages of our research is that, um, basically, the, first of all, the use of mobile technology in a, in a shared bed is common, and um, it has both, both positive and negative effects. And definitely this positive effect is, is like, um, it like um, serves as a routine or, like a, for, or it facilitates this kind of like coziness between partners, and they can discuss around the same topics and, and so on, and spend time together. But also these negative effects, um, especially to do with the, like sleep disturbance. And that is that, um, People do employ different strategies not to disturb their partner, so they paid attention to that. Um, not always necessarily, not always successfully, but anyway, like um, there was an effort to to try to try to not to disturb the partner's sleep. Um, but then, on the other hand, it's uh, especially from the interviews, it like came up like this considered part, as part of the normal life that the sleep is occasionally disturbed, disturbed by phones. And I think this is interesting, especially thinking like a, how much attention the, the, um, we now get to the all kind of like wellness tracking application and sleep tracking and so on. But then people on the other hand like accept that yeah, that just happens and it's normal. And, and um, then I, th I think this was also very interesting that uh, sometimes, and with some couples, the bedrooms are treated as sanctuaries uh, where there are specific rules to limit the technology usage. Okay, and that concludes my talk. Yes. So on that kind of material, then the, the use of headphones and so on plays a, a bigger role. But yes, that's considered as part of it, yeah. Too. Uh, with the with the agreed upon mm -hmm. rules for uh, how much technology use is too much or, mm -hmm. or when they can use it, mm -hmm. um, did you find instances where one person in the couple wanted to use technology in the bedroom more than the other, or one did and one didn't? Yes. And how did they deal with that? 
Yeah. So yes, we did, and especially like in the in the interviews because the, the interviews lasted like one and a half hours per per couple. So there was actually quite a lot of descriptions of of the family practices and so on. And for instance, um, um, there could be like that one person was like um, checking work emails or had to be more um, online because of the work, and then. Um, in some occasions, it was accepted like, yeah, well, that's part of your job, and you just need to do that. So that's like this kind of tolerating. But also there's, um, there was occasions that um, um, the, the partner was annoyed, that somebody like, yeah, you just keep looking at your like, um, WhatsApp messages or Facebook, and I want to sleep or want to spend some time with you, and Hoo -hoo, I'm here, and why do I even be in this bed with you? That kind of thing. So, <laughs> so there was like uh, also evidence on that. And then... Also, um, with one couple interviewed, they had made a, a rule. Like they, they said that they technology usage or phone usage got out of hand, and then they made, made a rule that they wanted to really limit it. Like they made a, um, a decision on that. So definitely there was evidence on that. Thank you. Hello? Any, okay. Can, no. Just one sec. Like, can you start first? Yeah. I did it, man. Kai Lukov, University of Washington. Uh, I had a question about how the negotiation of mobile technology use in bed compares to other technologies. If you could expand upon like television, which I know is extremely common in bedrooms in America, um, and how that contrasts to negotiating mobile technology use. So we didn't especially look at that. So we were focused. We focused on the on the mobile technology usage, but um, basically. Technology use is, is so common in families that it's um, definitely like people, they had smartphones and they had all other kinds of technologies and so on. So I think the, um, the media use is such a practice which has been like entwined into everyday life that it's everywhere. So that kind of thing. But we didn't especially look at like um, TVs or like a situated technolo technology. So that would be something to, for instance, look in the future. Yeah. Okay, so one, one more question, David, do you want to ask? Yeah, he asked my question. Okay. 